Now let's go build our data dashboard. So to do that, I'm going to copy over average cost and material. I'm going to pull them over closer to where um, we left off with um, series two. Because in order to get a cost, I need the um, the cost per square foot of the materials, and I need the square footage of the different materials. So in order to get the square footage, I'm going to need to find the actual objects. So here I have my, my model here on the left. And if I, I'm trying to isolate out all the different um, different objects. So this here would be the exterior fin. I'm going to pull this over. That'll be exterior fin. I'm going to create a little um, relay because I like to have them labeled. Now, notice that I have both the relay and the container. Relays, I'm not able to visualize any geometry, so they don't really work all that well for holding on to geometry if you want to be able to preview them. So often I'll have both combined like this. All right, so if that's the fin, let's find the glass. There we go, that's the glass area. And I also want the solid wall. Now in this case, notice I wasn't able to identify because I didn't have a surface component. So I'm going to very quickly um, disconnect these. I'm going to pull in those surfaces here. Probably should have done that to begin with. All right, so let's grab one more. Copy this up. And let's get our solid wall. Fantastic. So I now have all of my objects and I have the, the average cost. Now I've already forgotten which item was which, but that's why I have material here. So now it's glass first, then wall, then exterior fin. So let's organize it like this. I want to now find the area of each of these. There's a component called area. So this is quite easy. I can plug that in and you see that I have a whole long list of areas. So if I now do mass addition, I now have a value that is all of my um, all of my areas. Now I could copy this down three times, which isn't so bad. Uh, and this here is now going to be giving me my my wall area. Now notice when I plug in the fins here, I have not one value but many. Well, that's because I have notice this dashed line. I have a branching structure coming in because the fins are organized in two values. Uh, each branch is its own panel. So I want to flatten this because I no longer care about any of that structure. I just want to get the final single value and I have it. Now notice that I am copying multiple chunks of code. Every time you do this, you should probably think, hey, isn't there a better way of doing this using a branching structure? And absolutely we could if we wanted to. I could uh, say merge all of these values together. I'm um, sorry, uh, entwine is what I meant to say. I can entwine all the values. I don't want them all on one list, I want them separated. But I now want them in one branch. Um, and if I simplify, you can see that uh, I now have the three, all the objects in one, and I would then be able to use just one of these bits of code. And here I have the outputs um, nicely organized into my different um, single values each, which can then align with my average cost. So this is useful if I say have 15 different values here, I might want to um, use a singular data structure like this. Uh, but in our case, I actually think it's kind of useful to have the exact value out here because I have so few. So I have glass area, I have wall area, I have thin area. Okay, so now that I've collected all of these, um, all of these objects, now I would like to um, multiply it with the average cost. So several ways of doing this, um, but really, um, so I want to have the first item each.
And here you're seeing where I'm going to start repeating a lot of my code because I'm not doing it through one branch structure. Um, again, it's whatever, whichever way you prefer. But here I know that this is my glass cost by glass area. And now the output is going to be the total cost. So if I repeat this several times, but I use a different cost each time, different area. We now have our total cost. If I were to look at this in a panel format, now right now we could just um, stop here because I actually have the real values, right? I can see them in Grasshopper. I can look and say, okay, there's those numbers. And if I come over to here, and say adjust my facade, come back over here, I could see that those numbers updated. But that was kind of a pain, and as I was making changes, I wasn't able to see this information live. So the goal of having a dashboard like this is to have this information at our fingertips while we are designing. So let me turn off all this stuff. Um, so there are several ways to make um, to have this information at our fingertips. You could maybe write the, there are components to write information onto the screen, but one of the easiest ways is simply to add it to the remote control panel. So you might have noticed that I have this RCP grasshopper out here. Now to make it show up, click view remote control panel. It should pop up. And all I have to do now is take uh, an object. This works for, for many, of, many of the components, sliders, Boolean toggles, and panels. If I right click, you'll see publish to remote panel. As soon as I do that, the information shows up. Now, and you can uh, click edit on here. We won't go into too much detail, but you can uh, say rename this group to whatever I want. I'll call it total cost info. I can change the color to whatever I want it to be, right? Um, and you can add add new groups, you can add labels, you can do lots of things here. And now I have a nice little um, dashboard that as it changes, you should see this change. There you go, cool, the number's changing. Now, this isn't very legible to me, and I don't need six decimal points for this value, right? So let's do a little bit of cleanup. So the first thing I notice is that I don't want any of those um, numbers, so I'm gonna use a round component. I'm going to do this a little bit upstream. And now I kind of wish that I'd done it differently with, um, so I didn't have to repeat myself, but this isn't so bad. So I'm going to round to nearest, and you'll see already it has updated. So let's repeat this. Now, I want to create a title. So I have this numbers, but I don't really know what it is or what material it's related to. So here I'm going to use a concatenate command. And I want to say that my material type equals, let's take a look at what the, this is outputting. So here I'm starting to create a little text string. So equals, and then if I wanted this cost, so I'm going to merge all these three together so that I can just pipe it into the concatenate once. There you go. Now in order to display these up here, I will need um, each one to be its own panel. So I'm gonna have to explode this out. Maybe it would have been faster just to copy this down, but whatever. As you can see, lots of different ways of doing things. And now I have a well-formatted dashboard that tells me what I want. Of course, I can now change these um, the text to be whatever I want. It can be parametric. Um, in fact, you may even want to adjust these numbers and automatically add little commas through some kind of fancy text formatting. I could add a dollar sign. Actually, let's do that. There we go. So 
you can go wild. You can make these as complicated as you want. Um, if you really want more flexibility, I would recommend using the human UI components to create a um, nice user interface. Uh, but this is a very easy way of getting information into your fingertips while you design. And this is all based on data that was actually imported directly from an Excel spreadsheet.